Hi, this is Chetz and today I want to show you how to use Overt 4.3 and convert machine from ESXi to Overt platform. So the first thing that we'll need to do is to uh, create a provider. A provider is something that basically gives services to Overt, even if it's internal part. So here I've created a VMware Overt provider and let's just look at it let's edit it there are a few things that you'll need first you'll need a vcsa or a vcenter that's basically uh, where over it connects to you also need an esxi server um, just the name not the root password or something like that you just need one because uh, basically um, Overt uses the vCenter slash vCSA API access, but it also needs access to some ESXi service to ask it for API access to the machine because basically um, this translator converter is not going to connect to let's say iSCSI or NFS and start copying VMDK slash VMX files or something like that. So you'll need to give it uh, these parameters first. Uh, let's let's uh, create something like new here. So uh, you'll need uh, to select the type. Scroll down to VMware. And then you'll need to select any data center inside over here. This is not the data center on uh, ESXi slash uh, vCenter. That's the data center in over it. And then we'll need to follow the details. So I'll just edit what I already answered. And here you'll put your vCenter slash vCSA uh, IP or um, FQDN name, full qualified domain name of the vCenter, uh, the ESXi name, the data center in the ESXi slash all the vSphere, you'll need to give it the data center. If you're going to uh, need to use a specific machine that it's found on a specific cluster, um, or for this test I don't have any cluster on the ESXi side, so you'll need to put it manually here. You also need to disable the SSL certificates unless you have uh, the certificate both for OVIRT and ESXi, the same from the same CA and everything, just disable it here. A proxy host, you don't need it. You'll need to provide the username for the vCenter slash vCSA, not the ESXi, remember. So uh, by the default, by default, vCenter creates you an administrator at vSphere.local and your password. Now, after you've cre uh, created it, don't click OK, click test. And scroll back and you'll see it in green. This uh, test succeeded. Manage to access provider. That's great. Click OK. Now we have it. Now, in order to actually import a machine, we're going to compute virtual machines and click here and select import. On the data center, if you have few data centers in Overt, pick one that you want to transfer to. And the source is VMware. And here, the external provider that you just created we just select it. You'll see all the details filled. Click the load button. Now, this will show you the virtual machines that are in the ESXi side. Make sure to select only the virtual machines that you want to convert that they are turned off on the ESXi. For example, if I'll take something like, uh, I don't know, VCSA. I'll take it, I'll move it to virtual machine to import. When I'll click next, it tells me that all chosen machines are running 
and you cannot import a running machine you have to power it off so I can click here select this arrow and it goes back to this list so now you can basically select either a single or a few machines that you want to convert I'll take one that I've created yesterday uh, where is it just a second okay let's take this one CentOS Mini and click Next oh it is running so I'll just power it off and resume okay so I powered it off let's click next and as we can see here's the machine that I've chosen I'll click here for a clone and uh, basically which cluster do I want to put it which storage it's very important which storage will host the virtual machine CPU profile if you have profiles you can select here uh, alloc uh, allocation policy if you want to pre-allocate it to take the full disk space physical disk space in your storage or thin provisioning it's up to you now if it's a Windows machine or it requires uh, Vertio drivers most of the time it's just Windows machines you'll need to click here and select the ISO uh, file that you uploaded to the ISO domain uh, so basically that the conversion can install the drivers for Windows since this machine is CentOS is not Windows I can disable it uh, network uh, just one thing here I'm just going to select CentOS I don't think there is a CentOS here but let's just select Red Hat Enterprise uh, what else I don't think you can do here anything else at this stage network interface it's important so that it can allocate a MAC address since I didn't uh, create any new pool and I just gave uh, the default pool this is the default pool it might complain a bit but it will still run and uh, network uh, network name and profile name unless you've added network cards you need to select to which card and which uh, profile click OK now you'll see it here in the virtual machines and you can click here in the tasks to see that it starts importing it validates and then it starts executing and then it creates a sub process to create the volume and then after creating the volume it's starting to convert the virtual machine this virtual machine is about 3 gigabytes in size the, uh, the virtual hard disk so it should be pretty quick but if you want to convert Windows machines that you've used or Linux machine that you've used with tens or hundreds of gigabytes this will take time depends on your storage depending on your network so keep in mind that you'll need to give it time to convert now you can always see it right here if we'll take it here you can see the status they initialize and after it's initializing it's starting to copy and most of the time you can watch the events if something is wrong or not these events uh, prior to recording I just played with the VMware external provider so ignore them let's click refresh nothing here basically it does auto refresh you don't need to click refresh so going back here let's see what it comes to right now it's just initializing and then it will transfer uh, convert and you'll see here um, something that grows the um, progress of course so I'll pause the recording and I'll be right back when it finishes okay it finished converting the machine uh, by the way if you want to check what's going on you can uh, SSH to the hosted machine that it's uh, 
running and uh, you just uh, top or something and follow the process qmu dash image img to see if it's running and what's going on with it so now that it's finished to do it to perform the conversion we can basically edit the machine and we can do some uh, small touch-ups for example this is server and we can just uh, write here sent us mini test uh, what else uh, yes uh, one thing that we'll need to do here in the system is to set up a time zone and since I live in Israel I'll just set up Israel or else it will complain that uh, the time zone which runs the overt and the time zone inside the VM are not uh, the same and it will just put an exclamation mark in the status uh, something else will need QMU user agent probably but we'll see it in a minute okay now let's power this machine on okay it's green it's green which means we can click console it downloads and let's open it and it finished booting let's see what's going on with this machine okay uh, it will take a few seconds to update the status one thing that we'll need to install and I'm guessing it's not there already <coughs> yeah we'll need to install QMU user agent Oh, he didn't find it. Okay. Let's search for it. Sorry, it's called guest agent. My mistake. After it's installed, let's start it you can use this simple trick enable dash dash now and it's running so everything is running the machine is running and we can start using this machine that we converted and we can basically um, clone it or do whatever we need to do in the next video i'll show the same thing but with windows machine it's a bit more complicated thanks like it subscribe if you want and i'll see you in the next video